Greetings in the name of the most holy and powerful name of our Savior Jesus Christ. Welcome to the 37th day of Lenten Reflection. Dear friends, we have journeyed together with Jesus being brought before Pilate and Herod and the wrong accusations that Jesus was not responsible for. Today, we get little more deeper in the way of salvation. Yes, friends, let us get along the silence at the scourging of Christ. What made Jesus to be so silent? The answer is only and only genuine love for we each one of us. Over the last few days, we learned that Pilate pronounced Jesus not guilty, but the Jews would not accept it and persisted in demanding Jesus' crucifixion. We read this in John chapter 18, verse 38 to 39. Pilate then gave them a choice between Jesus and a notorious, rebellious and murderer by the name of Barabbas. They chose Barabbas over Christ. And both John and Matthew record that after the freeing of Barabbas, Pilate had Jesus flogged. We read in John chapter 19, verse 1 to 5, Then Pilate took Jesus and had him flogged, and the soldiers wove a crown of thorns and put it on his head, and they dressed him in a purple robe. They kept coming up to him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews, and striking him on the face. Pilate went out again and said to them, Look, I am bringing him out to you to let you know that I find no case against him. So Jesus came out wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe. Pilate said to them, Here is the man. St. Luke writes that Pilate's motive in having Jesus flogged was to appease the Jews. Therefore, I will punish him and then release him. We read in St. Luke chapter 23 verse 16. Pilate hoped that the scourging of Christ back would elicit some sympathy and mercy for this innocent man and would satisfy the mob's bloodlust when they see Jesus in pathetic condition. Roman scourging was called the halfway death because it was supposed to stop just this side of death and was not administered in addition to another punishment. The two thieves also to be crucified were not scourged. Considering both Jewish and Roman laws were disregarded in the matter of Christ's punishment, Jesus was treated worse than a common criminal. Flogging or scourging was a terrible way to inflict pain on a man. Jesus' back would have been stretched over a whipping post so that he could not move, while two men on either side would prepare themselves by choosing the implements of scourging. Scourging by the Romans took one of the three forms. There was a light beating with strips of leather administered as a warning. Then there was a severe beating and lastly there was a severe flogging delivered with a whip with several leather thongs with pieces of metal or bone tied on the ends. We see and learn from the scripture that there the easing up of the scourging didn't happen with Jesus. On the contrary, they were gradually becoming more severe. As we read in Isaiah chapter 53 verse 7, So as a sheep before its shearers are silent, the Lord did not open his mouth. The silence of Christ and the lack of confession of any sin brought the soldiers to use the severest form of scourging. This kind of scourging would tear pieces of skin off, off his back and leave him with bones alone. The prophet King David saw this and wrote in the book of Psalms, All my bones are on display. People stare and gloat over me. The gospel do not tell us how many times they whipped Jesus, but the apostle Paul had 39 lashes on the different occasion as we read in 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 24. Tradition has it that this was so with Jesus as well. As Romans chapter 5, verse 8 says, 
that Jesus would be willing to bear my sin upon himself and have it nailed to the cross for us proves his great love for us but God shows his love for us in that while we were still sinners Christ died for us dear friends let us take some time today to thank the Lord to suffer for us beyond words his love speaks volumes even in his silence may the lord lead we each one of us to the depth of his love which cannot be measured may we experience his closeness in each days of our life amen